bringing you a new video tonight. This one is 3D Dinosaur Adventure by Knowledge Adventure. It was originally released for floppy disk in 1993, and in 1997 there was a CD updated release, which is the one you're about to see in a few moments. If you don't have 3D glasses, it's not a problem. If you do, be sure to put them on when the screen indicates. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome to 3D Dinosaur Adventure. Get ready. Put your 3D glasses on. You can take your 3D glasses off now, but keep them handy. You'll also find 3D images in the 3D Dinosaur Museum, Createosaurus, and the Reference section. Welcome to Dinosaur Adventure 3D. If you need more help, click on the question mark. Read along with the Dinosaur Storybook. Long, long ago, animals called dinosaurs lived on the Earth. There were big ones. small ones. There were wet ones. And dry ones. Some flew in the sky. And some walked on the ground. Some ate plants. And some ate other dinosaurs. Where did they all come from? From mother and father dinosaurs, of course. Where did they go? Well, we don't know, but some people think comets killed them all. And now all that's left is bones.
Dimetrodon. Are you ready to go on a dinosaur safari? Click on the dinosaur that may have butted heads with other dinosaurs, just like mountain goats do today. You're right, you found the Stegosaurus. Its thick bony head could withstand incredible force. Click on the duck-billed dinosaur that had hundreds of teeth in its jaw, which were used to chew up leaves and tough plants. You're right, you found the Hadrosaurus. This was the first dinosaur to be discovered in North America. Click on the duck-billed dinosaur, which is thought to have taken good care of its babies. You're right! You found the Myasaura. The name of this dinosaur means good mother. Click on the meat-eating dinosaur that had a massive skull and a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. You're right! Allosaurus lived in the Jurassic period and probably hunted large plant eaters like Brachiosaurus. Click on the prehistoric reptile that used its fin to collect heat from the sun. You're right! You found the Dimetrodon. It lived in the Triassic period and was an early ancestor of mammals. Click on the tiny dinosaur that was not much bigger than a modern-day chicken. You're right, you found Compsognathus. It was only two feet long. Click on the dinosaur that is thought to be the largest meat-eating animal ever to walk on the face of the earth. You're right, you found the Tyrannosaurus rex. Its enormous jaw was covered with muscles and filled with six-inch teeth. Scary, isn't it? Click on the ancient reptile that flew in the air using a wing made of thin skin. You're right. You found the Quetzalcoatlus. It measured 39 feet wide, making it the largest flying animal ever. You're doing great. Click on the small relative of the Triceratops that protected itself with a hard bony frill around its head. You're right. You found the Protoceratops. In the 1920s, scientists discovered fossilized eggs in Mongolia that belonged to this dinosaur. Click on the plant-eating dinosaur that walked around on all fours, but occasionally reared up on its hind legs to eat leaves at the top of a tree. Keep looking. Th You're right. You found the Platyosaurus. This dinosaur was an early ancestor of the giant plant eaters, such as Apatosaurus and Diplodocus. Click on the giant dinosaur that ate plants and was once called Brontosaurus. You're right! You found the Apatosaurus. It lived in what is now North America. Click on the dinosaur that had a hard, flat head which it used like a battering ram. You're right, you found the Homolocephaly. It is related to another head-butting dinosaur known as Stegosaurus. 
click on the 11-ton dinosaur that used its horns to protect itself from large meat-eating dinosaurs. You're right! You found the Triceratops. It lived in large herds all over North America. Click on the prehistoric animal that was warm-blooded, had live babies, and lived at the same time as the dinosaurs. You're right! You found the Megazostrodon. This tiny animal was one of the first true mammals. Click on the carnivorous dinosaur that had a mysterious crest on the top of its head. You're right! You found the Dilophosaurus. Some scientists believe this crest was used to attract mates. Click on the ancient reptile that may have given birth to live babies, just like mammals do today. You're right! You found the Ichthyosaurus. A fossil of this marine reptile was discovered with a small fossilized baby Ichthyosaurus inside. Congratulations! You got them all right! Do you really know your dinosaur names? Can you find the Stegosaurus? You're right, this is a Stegosaurus. Can you find the Apatosaurus? You're right, this is an Apatosaurus. Can you find the Tyrannosaurus Rex? You're right, this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Can you find the Triceratops? You're right, this is a Triceratops. Can you find the Albertosaurus? You're right, this is an Albertosaurus. You're doing great. Can you find the Pteranodon? You're right, this is a Pteranodon. Can you find the Allosaurus? Keep looking! Keep looking! You're right! This is an Allosaurus. Can you find the Brachiosaurus? You're right! This is a Brachiosaurus. Can you find the Myasaura? You're right! This is a Myasaura. Are you ready for level 2? These are a little harder. Can you find the Parasaurolophus? Keep looking! Keep looking! You're right! This is a Parasaurolophus. Can you find the Plesiosaurus? You're right! This is a Plesiosaurus. Can you find the Dimetrodon? You're right, this is a Dimetrodon. Can you find the Velociraptor? You're right, this is a Velociraptor. Can you find the Stegosaurus? Keep looking. Keep look, you're right. This is a Stegosaurus. You really know your dinosaur names. Can you find the Quetzalcoatlus? You're right. 
This is a Quetzalcoatlus. Can you find the Ankylosaurus? You're right. This is an Ankylosaurus. Can you find the Styracosaurus? You're right. This is a Styracosaurus. Can you find the Diplodocus? Keep looking! You're right. This is a Diplodocus. Congratulations! You got them all right. Oh, wait till I get a hold of you. What's the matter with you? We already agreed. I get to do the congratulations. Really changed my mind. Wait till I get my forearms around you. Oh, yeah. Good luck with those puny little things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You can do the congratulations. <laughs> you you. Now go back to the Cretaceous period where you came from. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Hey, hey, watch it. Those horns are sharp. Well, get out of my way, then. Hey, I got an idea. Let's do it together, okay? Oh, all right. Congratulations! Congratulations! Can you recognize a dinosaur when you see one? Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I am a Dinosuchus and that's my skin. It was very bumpy like a crocodile skin is today. Hey, I'm related to crocodiles. <laughs> no wonder. Which reptile is this a part of? <laughs> You're right. I'm a Dilophosaurus and that's my head crest. <laughs> I probably used it to let other dinosaurs like me know whether I was male or female. <laughs> In this case, I'm female, of course. <laughs> Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm an Allosaurus, and that's my eye. I probably had very good eyesight so I could spot my prey from great distances. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Parasaurolophus and that's my head crest. It measured six feet long and was made of a hollow nasal passage. I may have used it to make a loud trumpet-like sound. Which reptile is this a part of? Excuse me, you're looking for some other reptile. Uh, you're right. I'm a Brachiosaurus and that's my thigh. It was filled with a column-like bone that helped support my enormous weight. You're doing great. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. Uh, I'm a Euparkaria, and those are my forearms. I was an early ancestor of dinosaurs and ran for short distances on my hind legs. Which reptile is this a part of? You're, you're right, you're right. I'm an iguanodon, and, and that's my tail. When I walked, I, I held my tail straight out behind me. It was a pretty handy weapon when I was in danger. Which reptile is this a part of? Right. I'm a Dimetrodon, and that's my sail fin. I probably used it to absorb heat from the sun and warm my body. Remember, I was a cold-blooded reptile. Are you ready for level two? Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Triceratops, and uh, that's my mouth. 
This hard, bony beak was perfect for breaking up pieces of tough plants. Which reptile is this a part of? Oh, you're right! I'm a plesiosaurus, and that's my flipper. To move through the water, I moved it up and down like a bird's wing. <laughs> oh. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right! I'm a Stracosaurus, and that's my neck frill. These horns were perfect for scaring large predators like Albertosaurus. Yeah! Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Stegosaurus, and those are my plates. I probably use them to absorb heat from the sun and warm up my body. Hmm. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Struthiomimus, and uh, that's my hand. I used it to grab the small animals that I ate. You're doing great. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Protoceratops, and that's my frill. It protected my body from attacks by larger dinosaurs. Which reptile is this a part of? You're right. I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and those are my teeth. They measured six inches in length and were perfect for cutting into the flesh of other dinosaurs. Which reptile is this a part of? <laughs> You're right. I'm an Ankylosaurus, and that's my armored skin covering. It was so thick that most dinosaurs couldn't bite through it. <laughs> Some people think I look like a tank. I think they're right. Congratulations, you got them all right. Oh. <laughs> wow, you're incredible. You're amazing. You're unbelievable. <laughs> really? Well, really. Dinosaur Museum. Welcome to the 3D Dinosaur Museum. Put your 3D glasses on.
hey, let's go see a dinosaur movie. Watch as a fierce Allosaurus threatens a peaceful Stegosaurus. The long-necked Apatosaurus was one of the largest animals to walk the Earth. Let's watch as it has a little snack. It all seems like a day in the park for a family of Rhabdodons until a hungry Albertosaurus shows up for lunch. Watch as two hungry Allosaurus try to catch a couple of Lambiosaurs as they race across the open landscape. But be careful, they might see you.
Why did dinosaurs become extinct? Here's one possibility. Scientists believe that the Deinonychus was one of the most ferocious dinosaurs ever. He sure sounds mean. The Deinonychus was a fast, efficient predator that hunted in packs. Watch how effective they are as they hunt an egg-stealing Struthiomimus. While dinosaurs appear ferocious, many were good parents, protecting and taking care of their offspring until they were old enough to fend for themselves. The Allosaurus was the smaller, faster cousin of the Tyrannosaurus, but many dinosaur experts believe it was even deadlier. A hungry group of Apatosaurs stopped for breakfast on a bright Jurassic morning.
the parents of a baby hadrosaur wait anxiously for their new arrival to hatch from its egg. Two hadrosaurs prepare a nest. Since no one really knows what dinosaurs were like, it's possible that a meeting between a Tyrannosaurus and a Triceratops might have gone like this. Not. Hey, there's Triceratops. Oh, no, not this guy again. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Triceratops, I think there's something on your shoulder. Here, here, let me help you with it. Listen, uh, Rex, I why don't you just go down to somebody else, okay? Like, I, I saw a Stegosaurus a couple miles back. I think that would be great if you would just go bug him. Oh, stop, oh, stop, stop it. away. Stop it. Down your chin. Down your chin. chin. Back. Yeah, right under there. No, no. Hold still. Let me see. Oh. Back on. Thank you. Go. Oh. Look, look. look. Oh. Oh. Hey, why do you always have to pick on me? I don't like it. No, no. Don't touch me. I don't want to be touched. I'm going to grab it for you, okay? I'll grab it. Because you're with my forearms. Called the trumpeter, the Parasaurolophus could have used its six-foot-long crest as a horn to warn other dinosaurs of danger. On January 7, 1986, scientists in California launched a model of Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying dinosaur, and it really flew. Watch closely as a Tyrannosaurus grows from fossil to live, moving dinosaur right before your eyes.
If this Stegosaurus doesn't look too bright to you, it's probably because he has a brain the size of a walnut. The Struthiomimus may look like an ostrich, but he's really an egg-eating dinosaur. Scrambled, anyone? The plant-eating Triceratops was one of the last dinosaurs on Earth before they became extinct. Using the latest computer-driven animation, scientists have put together this model of a moving, breathing Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, king of the tyrant lizard, was the largest predator ever on the face of the earth. Listen. The Triceratops was normally a peaceful creature, but when attacked by a predator like the Tyrannosaurus, its sharp plated head made it a fierce opponent. Scientists believe that the Velociraptor, or Speedy Plunderer, hunted in packs to bring down prey much larger than itself. A dimetrodon is not a dinosaur at all, but a reptile. Scientists believe it used the large sail on its back to gather warmth from the sun. Wild-looking eggs. Let's create our own dinosaur.
No one knows exactly what dinosaurs and prehistoric reptiles really looked like, so why don't you create your own? Put on your 3D glasses and select a dinosaur from the bottom row. Then click on a skin texture at the top. To rotate your dinosaur, click on its picture. To hear what your dinosaur has to say, click on the Talking Dinosaur button. Wire Frame Pattern Tyrannosaurus I feel so empty inside. Rainbow Pattern You wouldn't happen to have this in a zebra skin, would you? Marble Pattern I was hoping that someday they would dedicate a statue to me. I have no idea. Dalmatian Dog Pattern Someone told me that humans make coats out of leopard skin. Well, don't get any bright ideas, cuz I'm a meat eater. Brow! Checkerboard pattern. How would you feel if I dressed you up like a tablecloth? Elephant skin pattern. Do you have any tissue? I feel like blowing my nose. Fractal pattern. Excuse me. Where's the bathroom? Wood pattern. I'd better not go out in the rain or I'll rot. Zebra skin pattern. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse or a zebra. Oh, maybe I just did. Gold pattern. I'm made of gold. I'm made of gold. I can't believe it. Gold! Real gold! Wait a second, is this some kind of weird computer trick? I mean, are you going to push some button on that keyboard of yours and make me disappear? Please, don't! Parasaurolophus Um, uh, is this too fancy for a first date? <laughs> Honestly, you can tell me. Elephant skin pattern All I need now is a bow tie and a cummerbund and I'm ready for a wedding. Rainbow pattern Frankly, until now, I wasn't very impressed with your little bag of tricks. However, I must admit this latest transformation was quite amazing. I mean, well, look at me now. <laughs> I haven't looked this good since that hot day in July 82 million years ago. Stegosaurus. Dalmatian dog pattern. So, I was hiding in the shadows the other day, and this Tyrannosaurus Rex walked right by me. <laughs> wow, he didn't even know I was there. Wood pattern. If you think you're gonna use me in your next campfire, you got another thing coming. Fractal pattern. All of a sudden, I feel young again. Let's go dancing. Pteranodon. Of course you do realize that dinosaurs like me became extinct millions of years ago. We were also not covered by strange and unnatural textures like this. Uh, we also couldn't speak. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm, maybe Zebra skin pattern. Let's get in a car and drive forever. Marble pattern. To be marble, or not to be marble, that is the question. I guess you answered it for me. Checkerboard pattern. Why do I suddenly feel silly?
Tarvasaurus. Oh, I don't think it's such a good idea to laugh at me. I'm bigger than you. Wood pattern. I don't think Tyrannosaurus Rex would find me very appetizing. Wire frame pattern. Don't tell me Stegosaurus is wearing the same thing. Elephant skin pattern. Hey, I'm pretty good looking. Huh. Deinonychus. If I had a trunk at the end of my nose, you might just confuse me with an elephant. Then again, maybe not. Gold pattern. Oh, yes. Shiny skin like this would have been nice in a jewelry store, but not in a prehistoric jungle. <laughs> Rainbow pattern. Oh, uh, radical dude. Uh, where's the black light? Marble pattern. This wouldn't be so bad if I were in the center of a dining room table. Triceratops. Marble is a wonderful skin to have. It's just not so easy moving around in it. Fractal pattern. Honestly, uh, I prefer plants. Let's play Save the Dinosaurs. Great! You've made it! But there's not much time! A comet is about to hit the Earth and destroy all Dinosaurs! Fortunately, we've got an unbelievable opportunity to save some of the dinosaurs. A time tunnel has been discovered, and it's your assignment to bring back the doomed dinosaurs. Okay, it's time for your first mission! Save Coelophysis! Coelophysis was a late Triassic dinosaur that was 10 feet tall and 601 pounds. saved one dinosaur! Now for mission two! Find Plateosaurus. It was an ancestor of long-necked plant eaters like Brachiosaurus. Mission completed! Now for mission three! Go save Triceratops! Triceratops was 30 feet long and weighed 11 tons! It was the rhinoceros of the dinosaurs and lived around 70 million BC. Its three-horned head must have been a fearsome suck. Great! You've almost completed the first level! Now for mission four! Go save... Now for mission five. Say Congratulations! You've completed the first level of your assignment before the comet. Mission completed! Yes! Now for me. 
Mission 7! Velociraptor was lightweight with long back legs. level two before the comet hit but with your skill you can achieve even more i'm sure of it we've managed to open the time tunnel one last time you can now save the last five dinosaurs you'll have less time than before and no one can tell you where to find them prepare yourself for mission 11 go save iguanodon Ig Now for mission 12. Save Saltisaurus. So You're in the wrong time period. There were no Saltisauruses in the Jurassic period. a small mouth with Mission 14. So, you think this is the right time period? <laughs> well, I wouldn't be so sure. Oh, I wish I'd been this close when I was looking for dinos. Try another time period, dude.
<laughs> wow! Another mission completed! One more mission to go! We're almost there! Don't give up! Mission fifth! I think I smell an Ankasaurus nearby. do you know your dinosaur facts? Nests in the sand. Scientists first discovered dinosaur eggs during an expedition to Mongolia, where they found more than 50 fossil dinosaur eggs covered with sand in the Gobi Desert. In this movie, you can see a recreation of a Hadrosaurus hatching. Earth comes alive. Close to 2.5 billion years ago, the Earth's surface and atmosphere were stable enough to support the first forms of primitive life. In the giant seas that covered the planet, single-cell organisms began to make their appearance. Most of them were very simple single-cell bacteria that fed on chemicals in the ocean's waters. Over time, a simple organism known as blue-green algae appeared and spread across the seas. Blue-green algae, still alive today, were important to the future of the planet because they used sunlight and water to make food and in the process created oxygen. As the blue-green algae thrived in the Earth's seas, they began to fill the atmosphere with oxygen. Soon the algae became so numerous that they formed huge reefs called stromatolites. Earth as we know it. Just as the dinosaurs began to vanish from the Earth, the modern continents had finally begun to take shape. Australia and Antarctica had broken off of South America India had moved north until it pressed into Asia, forming the Himalayan mountain range. North America, South America, and Europe had begun to take up their positions on either side of the globe. With the continent separated now, the plant and animal life began to develop very differently from place to place. Platyosaurus, first large reptile. Platyosaurus, or flat reptile, was one of the first large plant-eating dinosaurs known as prosauropods. These were the ancestors of the much larger sauropods, which includes Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus. Platyosaurus lived during the late Triassic and early Jurassic periods and ranged all over what is now Northern Europe. 
At a major fossil site in Germany, dozens of Plateosaurus skeletons have been uncovered at the same location, leading some scientists to believe that this dinosaur traveled in large herds as it browsed among trees and bushes, which were its food. Plateosaurus measured up to 23 feet long, with a tail that made up almost half of its length. Plateosaurus had a rather small head compared to the rest of its body. Its many leaf-shaped teeth had large, coarse serrations, very similar to modern plant-eating lizards. Plateosaurus probably spent most of its time walking around on all fours, though occasionally it reared up on its strong back legs to nibble at the tops of trees. Life. How did it happen? Here you can see an outline of the history of the universe. In the sky are galaxies and the comets, planets, and moons that formed in the solar system, plus, of course, the sun, on which all life depends. In the ocean at the far left are the molecules that make up life. As you look to the right, you can see the bacteria that were the first cells of life, followed by more complex sea life, and finally, land life. This is the story science tells us, but how did it happen? Many scientists believe that by chance, molecules combined into simple life forms, and experiments have shown that with the right atmosphere, lightning and solar radiation could create simple amino acids that are the building blocks of life. Then these amino acids could combine into simple life forms, and these in turn could change into increasingly complex life forms by the process of evolution outlined by naturalist Charles Darwin. Some scientists, however, don't believe this. They think that early life may have come from outer space. Why? Because, in the words of scientists Francis Graham Smith and Bernard Lovell, the possibility of molecules randomly combining into life within no more than a billion years is vanishingly small. Therefore, some scientists, such as geneticist Francis Crick, have concluded that early life must have come from outer space. Coelophysis the cannibal. This Dilophosaurus, the first terror. One of the first terrible meat eaters was Dilophosaurus, first found in Arizona. Generally, Dilophosaurus resembled other meat eaters. It was fast and agile, ran on two feet, had a long tail and sharp teeth. But there were some odd aspects to it. On the top of its head, from the front of its snout to a point between its eyes, ran two bony crests. The crests were quite thin, so it is unlikely they were used in combat. Scientists don't really know what they were for, but they may have been used as a sexual signal to females or to make their heads look bigger and frighten other animals. Also, Dilophosaurus' teeth were long and slender, and its jaws were not as strong as other big meat eaters. This has led scientists to think that they may have slashed repeatedly at their prey rather than killing them with a few bites. Or perhaps they were scavengers. Allosaurus, giant killer. Allosaurus, or leaping reptile, was one of the most common types of dinosaurs known as carnosaurs, or meat eaters. It lived about 150 million years ago, roaming parts of western North America and Africa in search of prey. Though not nearly as large as its close relative Tyrannosaurus, Allosaurus was quite a fearsome killer. An adult Allosaurus could grow up to 39 feet long, 15 feet tall, and weigh between one and two tons. As you can see in this movie, Allosaurus' skull was quite big in relation to its body, almost 2.5 feet long, and its jaws were lined with about 70 razor-sharp curved saw-edged teeth, just like the blade of a steak knife. These teeth pointed backwards, so that huge pieces of meat could be forced down into Allosaurus's hungry mouth. Allosaurus had short but strong front claws and four large claws on each of its back feet, three of which helped to carry its weight. These claws also enabled Allosaurus to hold down and tear at its prey. Scientists disagree about the hunting habits of Allosaurus. 
Some believe that the dinosaur was too large and clumsy to be a very effective hunter, while others argue that Allosaurus was quite agile and hunted down plant-eating dinosaurs in small packs. In fact, in North America, bones of Apatosaurus have been found with teeth marks that match those of Allosaurus. Self-sufficient eggs. Before reptiles could spend all their time on dry land, they had to develop a new way to give birth to their young. No matter how much time amphibians spent living on dry land, they always had to return to the water in order to lay their eggs. That's because baby amphibians, known as larvae, were too small and frail to survive on land without being crushed or drying out. So about 400 million years ago, certain amphibians began to lay a new kind of egg. It was called the amniotic egg. An amniotic egg is a specialized egg that is very similar to the eggs that birds and lizards lay today. The first amniotic egg was covered by a leathery shell, not a hard shell like a chicken egg, and contained everything needed for a young, undeveloped animal, called an embryo, to grow into a fully functioning baby that would eventually crack through the shell. Inside, the amniotic egg was divided into four major cavities that performed special functions to help the embryo develop. The main cavity held the embryo, which was surrounded by a fluid called the amnion that helped keep the embryo moist and cushion it from the vibrations of the outside world. Another cavity, called the yolk, contained a food supply for the embryo. The waste products from the growing embryo went into another cavity called the allantoic cavity. Finally, oxygen entered through tiny holes in the shell into an area known as the corion. With sturdy, self-sufficient eggs like these, reptiles were free to move as far as they liked on land, inhabiting new terrain like grassy lands and dry, hot deserts. Dinosaurs roam the earth, looking down on See you soon.